Hello, my name is Randy Scamahorn, and this is the Chairman's Brief. As Chairman of the Cobb Board of Education, I have the privilege of serving as spokesperson for the Cobb School Board. The school board, together with our staff, students, parents, and community, make up our team, striving for a common goal, student success. As the feeling of fall is in the air, many of us look forward to the sights and sounds of the football season. A key part of that atmosphere is the excellent marching bands here in Cobb. Our instrumental music programs are nationally recognized as among the best of the best. Music plays an important role in our academic development of many of our students. Here to tell us more about Cobb's excellence in music is our supervisor of instrumental music, Chris Farrell. Thanks for being here, Chris. Well, thank you for inviting me. And I wore a tie just especially in honor of you and, and our program. I love the tie. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Very briefly, tell us a little bit about yourself, like where you went to school, where you're from, uh, where you grew up. When did you get interested in music? Mm, okay, well, um, I'm originally from Elyria, Ohio, which is just right outside of Cleveland. Uh, spent most of my, you know, childhood there. Um, actually went to school at Miami University in Oxford, Ohio, outside of Cincinnati. Um, didn't start out as a music person. Uh, started out looking at accounting, uh, but uh, discovered that music was for me. So uh, I graduated from there with a degree in music education um, and taught for 12 years in Texas. I taught high school band for, for 12 years there. And then I moved to Georgia in 2006 and opened Hillgrove High School and started the band program there. Uh, now I'm in my eighth year as the supervisor here in the district. Um, I started in fifth grade uh, up in Ohio. We actually started a little earlier. We started in sixth grade here in, in, in Cobb, but uh, started out as a clarinet player, like your tie. Um, but uh, I switched to saxophone. I, I like to say that I chose that. I'm not sure that they didn't choose that for me, uh, but, uh, but I've been playing saxophone now for well, essentially 40 years. So, uh, so it's, been, uh, it's been a wonderful, wonderful part of my life. When I was in middle school, then junior high school, mm -hmm. that's, I took uh, three years of uh, music. We didn't have a marching band, but we had, had an orchestra type thing, and I played the tenor sax. Ah, there so, you go. And uh, I, I believe that I could still make a sound uh, sure. with my lip. It might not be a good one, <laughs> but I believe I could. Yeah. So, well, that's uh, a great thing. At last, you can always go back. Well, what turned you uh, to music? You thought you were going to go into accounting. Was it a teacher, your parents, uh, a good friend? It was my. It was actually a teacher, and 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 you know I'd always enjoyed it, and I'd always worked hard, and I always had a, a good amount of success. But I just in my mind, it just hadn't been kind of what I thought I should do. But I had a, a my freshman year of college. Uh, you know, I played in one of the top groups, and my uh, one of my professors said, you know, well. Why aren't you? You're always in here practicing. Why don't you do this? And I said, Well, I, you know, I hadn't really thought about it. And I did, and called my parents, and you know, blessed them. They were super supportive. They said, We need you. To, you know, you do what you need to do, and what's going to yeah. make you happy. And and I never looked back. Okay. Well, one of the things that I uh, observed when I was in the middle school uh, uh, level is that how quickly the band and music teachers whether it's choral or band, bring those uh, students, uh, we're talking about adolescents, mm -hmm. uh, into a disciplined atmosphere. I, I don't think I've ever went in, into a classroom over the years and saw a classroom in chaos. Mm -hmm. uh, how, how does that happen? Well, I think a number of different ways, and, and you're right, it could be anywhere in some of our, we've had classes that are up to 100, uh, depending on the size of the, the program well, and the room. That. Um, but usually, you know, it, obviously the teachers are, are, you know, they're really passionate. They're, they're very committed to what they do. So I think that comes through when, they, when they're in front of their classes. So, you know, the excitement, especially for students at the beginning of, hey, I'm going to get to play an instrument, or hey, I'm going to get to make, make music. I think there's, there's an incentive there, but I also think it, it has to do with the fact that, the, that really early on the students understand that, you know, one of the things they have to be able to do is to do something that's fairly complex the same way as their neighbor and the rest of the people in the room. And so we've all got to be on the same page, and we've all got to make sure we're doing our best to, to not only 
build our skill, but to support the people around us. Because if we're all doing, doing it the same way, then we're successful. Why is music so important to students and to maybe to all of us? Well, you know, it, it's been said music is the universal language. You know, every culture has music and music is something that we all relate to, whether it's life events or, you know, family members or, or emotions, all kinds of things. It just permeates everything I think we do as humans. Um, but I think what it does, especially I think in our music programs, is that I think that you know, it teaches some things in order for you to be able to do it that, that they don't get everywhere. I mean, you, you learn to be self-accountable um, because you have to practice. It's a new skill. It's like learning a new language. So you have to be able to do that. There's, you know, in instrumental music, there's the mechanics of learning to play an instrument. There's the multitasking that happens where they're reading music. They're having to listen not only to themselves, but the people around them. They have to be, uh, in a lot of cases, especially with our marching band programs, peer leadership. Um, there's, a, there's a very specific leadership structure that you have to have to, to get you know, 150 or 300 people to do what they need to do yeah. quickly. Um, yeah. So you learn a lot about leadership. And I think that also just you know, the brain processes and the thinking processes that happen help in every, every facet. I, always, I think I learned, I learned time management too, because you, you just, it, in order to, to do it with your individual practice and then also with the group practices, it, it takes time and you have to learn to make sure that you're on top of everything. And I think you learn those types of skills and, and critical thinking and problem solving and all those great things that apply to every facet of academics and then and really to life in general. How, it, <clears throat> how do marching bands prepare to, prepare to perform? Uh, the, I mean, you have like a couple, two, three hundred, four hundred mm -hmm students out there, they, they want to go home eventually, this <laughs> after school, not during a game. Right. Uh, do you, are there classes on that? Because I, I assume that if you're an orchestra type instructor versus a marching band instructor, they're totally different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how, how do you uh, start a band or get a band to go on and, and get all those routines together? Well, it's interesting because there is there are some similarities. So, for instance, if you do teach high school band in our county, they do have a full slate of, of concert band classes that are happening too. So, marching band is is a separate entity. New, you know, it can it usually has many of the same students, but there are some students who are not in the in the daytime program that are in the afternoon program for color guard and and for the you know the flags and the rifles. A lot of those types of uh, students aren't in band during the day. So they're, they're involved in other, other classes and activities. But uh, it starts uh, usually the planning for, for a marching band season usually starts the previous October or November. So the, the, the band directors and you know, any staff members that they have, color guard folks, the people that write the drill that the, you know, the band is doing on the field, that's usually someone that's, uh, that's you know, separate from the, from the band directors, um, someone who arranges the music. Most all of our programs have a custom designed production for halftime and for competitions. So it's not music that you can just go a buy. They have someone who has to sit down and arrange it and custom design oh, it. Okay. So they plan it around a theme. So that might start in that previous October while they're still in the middle of this year, okay. getting those things together. And then, um, you know, it comes summertime, um, you know, the, the, the band, marching bands start. You'll see them. They start basically when, when football starts, you'll see them out there. And they'll, they'll usually start with a camp that can be, you know, two to three weeks in the summer. Um, and it can be, you know, all day and, and sometimes partial days. And then they rehearse after school, you know, and a lot of it has to do with, um, you know, teaching the process, the student leadership that goes into that, helping them to learn. They've got to memorize their music. Um, you know, when they, you see them on the field, they're playing that music from memory. They've also got to memorize where they've got to be on the field and how many counts and who they're next to and what they're supposed to do when they get there. Uh, you know, tempo and volume and in different environments in a, in a football game and they go to different stadiums. So, um, you know, two or three days a week plus the Friday nights and, and some Saturdays. They're, they're working, working very hard, but it's a, it's a pretty specific process. And um, I think that, you know, it takes the biggest thing that I, that I always say too is, you know, if it weren't for our, our parents and our booster clubs, those, those parents that are out there every single day for rehearsal to help kids who, you know, might yeah. get sick or they don't feel very well or, you know, building those props and hauling the props and, you know, selling t-shirts and do all the things that they need to do, mm -hmm. just like any of our extra or co-curricular programs, um, that's, that's part of the core of what really makes that work. Cool. And we've always had great, great parent groups here too. 
Uh, and I'll second that mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. Bringing it back to the individual student, mm -hmm. how do you help a child uh, direct them to their talents or being motivated to a particular instrument? Is there a way to do that? Oh, absolutely. Well, and I think that the process is that, you know, no matter what, you know, we're trying to help find a place where the student will be most successful. And, you know, again, sometimes they really have one instrument in mind or one kind of group in mind and then you know through some discussion they find what what fits them the best and and many of our schools especially at the sixth grade level um, they'll do uh, you know they might sit down with a set of parents and a, and a student for for 15 minutes and say let's try these let's physically oh. try these instruments and see which one might work best and maybe that'll be an instrument you didn't even think about um, you know but, but parents I think if they know that you know the decision is between the teacher the student and the parents to try because we we want them to practice we want them to be happy you know if they're good at it they'll practice it if they practice it they'll be good at it and so it becomes a, it becomes a, it becomes a really a, you know kind of a, a cooperative effort so I think parents just really encouraging students to because you know they'll be frustrated it's not always easy um, I think that's that's the parents just help with that that kind of that guided practice and that encouragement is really important okay. Do we have any programs or assistance, or do we work with uh, the local music uh, stores, companies that uh, can help uh, get a student get an instrument that they may not otherwise be able to? Sure, yeah. Uh, well, you know, there are a lot of the instruments that are traditionally provided by our school. Some of the instruments that are really large instruments, cost prohibitive, uh, tubas and basses, and some of those instruments that would be, first of all, are hard to transport sometimes, and they're also just, just pretty costly. So those instruments are provided to those students free of charge, provided that we have you know an ample inventory at the school. Um, most of the music companies will also work with students, uh, some of the smaller instruments, and I, you know, I say flutes and clarinets and trumpets and some of those types of instruments and violins, uh, really with a really low cost, um, full maintenance rental program, so students are able mm -hmm. to rent them at a low cost. Uh, we are also, you know, we do from time to time have uh, families and, and, and other corporate entities even donate instruments that we can help distribute with with uh, with students sometimes you know it might be a student who graduated and really isn't going to keep playing that trombone every day you know once they're in college or beyond and and sometimes they'll they'll donate those back or or provide them to the school for a lot or to the students for a low cost yeah, so we try great. to do our best to never make that a barrier for a student to participate the old cliche where there's a will there's a way there is applies here absolutely okay absolutely what have our bands accomplished locally and nationally and you can break that down however you like sure you know specifically for our marching bands um, we do have a, a two-time national champion there's actually a, a championship circuit uh, it's called Bands of America that exists in every part of the United States and uh, they have regional competitions and they have what's called Grand Nationals which is in Indianapolis in the second week of November every year and we have a two-time national champion um, uh, band uh, that's uh, that, that um, about uh, I think it was uh, four years apart they were the national champion there uh, we've had five national finalist bands there as well um, we have multiple, multiple regional champions. Uh, many of our schools uh, have competed in, and, and especially in those Bands of America events, been regional champions. We have bands that, uh, in, you know, in local competitions, school-sponsored or, or state-sponsored competitions have always done really, really well. Um, and, and we have several bands that have been in the nationally televised parades, M Macy's Parade on Thanksgiving, the Tournament of Roses Parade uh, in, uh, in California, uh, we've had uh, bands travel to China, marching bands in China, Japan, wow. Europe. Uh, we, had, we had a band at uh, the uh, D-Day celebration in France. Um, and so the students just have a lot of opportunities and exposure there. Um, but it's always been, you know, one of the things that we've always enjoyed is that at every single one of our 16 high school programs, um, there's always been success at every one of those levels. And it doesn't always look the same at each school. But it certainly provides a great, you know, venue for the students and, and the community as well. How can parents motivate their students to take part in a band or, or try it? Let, let's break that down maybe in two parts. Try it and then keep going. Mm -hmm. Parents, I think, can. It's not about talent. Um, it's, it's about just getting there and experiencing it. Again, we, 
I say, you know, when you go to the Friday night football game, when you see the marching band out there, everybody in that marching band is out there performing 100% of the time. We don't have anybody sitting, sitting out. Everybody's a full performer all the time. Yeah. And so a, it's a place to belong. Um, you know, I always said that, you know, even when you go to high school, if you're going from eighth grade to ninth grade and you, you know, you're, there's always a little bit of trepidation when you go from yep. middle school to high school. You know, you, you show up three weeks early, you've already got this family of band folks who've been together for, you know, 60 hours or 80 hours before school even starts. And they, you know, it's, and it's students who are every kind of academic level, every kind of involvement. We've got, we've got students who play sports. We've got students who are, you know, academic challenge teams. We've got every type of student that you can imagine. Um, and it's really a place for them to come together and kind of have a family and to do something that, you know, they, is greater than themselves. Um, even though they yeah. develop the individual skill of learning to play an instrument or, or to sing, you know, it's when they see that group uh, achievement when they go out there and say, you know, I was I was a part of that, and I I, I I made that I helped make that happen. That's me too. I think that it's just a really great um, vehicle for not only, like I said, the individual development, but something that also is a group effort as well. And I think parents just have to know that again, it's always going to be a little bit at the beginning. It doesn't sound awesome, uh, you know. They start, and you you'll wonder if why you know I don't think I can take this for very long, um, but but it gets it gets better fast. And yeah. students will start to enjoy it, and you know, with their peers, will help encourage them. And, and you, it just, it ends up being kind of a uh, uh, almost self-fulfilling in a way. And I think once students really try it, once students are in it, we, we seldom lose students once they've really, you know, gotten into that program and really given it a chance. Um, it, and again, it's not; it, it has nothing to do with talent. It has everything to do with the willingness and the, and the work ethic that goes with that. Anything comes to mind that you'd like to bring it all together uh, for the benefit of our parents and audience that may be watching? Sure. Every year since 1972, minus one year, which was 2020, is what we call the Cobb Marietta Marching Band Exhibition. Again, started in 1972. It's an event where all 16 of our marching bands and the Marietta City Schools marching band perform for each other. Um, yeah. Rather than at a football game where you only have two bands or at a competition, it's really an opportunity for all of our Cobb County folks to hear bands from their other schools. So it occurs on October 11th and October 18th this year. We always have it at McEachern High School. They're always gracious, uh, gracious enough to host, host us for that. And um, so all uh, what will essentially be, essentially be 17 high school bands will come and perform. And they'll get feedback. We bring in professionals from all over the country to give them feedback. They're not getting a score. They're not getting a rating. It's not about competition. It's about supporting each other. Because while that band's out there, all the rest of the bands are up in the stands watching and cheering for them. And it's a great event. And yeah. it was one of the first ones in the country and is really inspired. If you look around, a lot of a lot of other districts have started to do that around the country as well. And we're really, one of the, the great things at the end of the night is we always have a university band perform at each night. So on October 11th, you'll have our Cobb County and Marietta bands, and then followed by the University of Georgia Redcoat Band will perform at, at McEachern following, uh, following our high school groups. And then on October 18th, the Auburn University Marching Band will perform. Wow. And so we're really fortunate. We've had um, so many great university bands there each and every year, and they, uh, they come out to, to, to really experience that with our kids. And I think in the end, um, again, I do believe that music is for everybody. Um, I really, you know, having the opportunity to get in there and, and, and learn to do something at a high level and learning to do it together and being successful, I mean, really, really to, to me, embodies what the, the one team, one goal is. Um, and the success is both as, as an individual student and also as a group, and it raises everything um, in the community as well. Well, thank you. And uh, I think you'll agree, too, that fall just wouldn't be the same without the sounds of our great bands in Cobb. Thanks for being here, Chris, and thank you for watching. Get out and enjoy those marching band performances coming up in October. You won't be disappointed. Be sure to join me again next week to discuss some of the great things happening in Cobb County School District. Have a good day.